Hey, 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 thanks for listening in to the REC Experience. I'm your host, Jazz Takar, and joining me today is Laura Crazy 8 Elto Stewart. What's going on, girl? I'm good. I'm good. I'm never going to get tired of that. No, I know. Crazy 8. The, the title just gets longer <laughs> and longer, which is a testament to all the work that you've been putting in. Uh, so thank you for that. You bet. It's been quite a year. It has been, and that's why we thought... It's fitting that we do a year in review uh, to talk about everything that, uh, you know, the ups and the downs, uh, the the progress on uh, this podcast, uh, as well as, you know, some other peripheral things that are happening in our business. Yeah, it's pretty crazy to think we're at the end of 2018 now. and Seven and, days away from Christmas, yeah. so Merry Christmas to all of our <laughs> listeners. But more viewers. so to think of, of where we started, where we started. Mm-hmm. 2018 compared to where we are now. Yeah, it's interesting that you bring that up um, because we started off with a little bit of a, you know what, for a lack of a better word, kind of a hangover. Um, not just from the vodka and scotch type, <laughs> but uh, a little bit of an, an emotional be- uh, hangover. Uh, we obviously lost our uh, dear friend and late partner, uh, Simon, and uh, that obviously going into 2018, that cloud um, emotionally was hanging over us. Yeah. And uh, to, to, you know, for myself, he was my partner and friend you know, one of my best friends for uh, 13 years, uh, my mentor who taught me the business, who would actually be in this seat. Yeah, right this is what he would have been yeah. doing for sure. Um, and so it's neat to, in that perspective, I know he's looking down and, and very, very proud of all of us uh, in terms of what we're, uh, what we're able to accomplish. I we wasn't the only part of the hangover that was it. What did you want to talk about? When we started about? the new year. Well, just, you know, it was rough, like those couple months right after, and we, we had some initiatives from a work perspective that uh, didn't really pan out all too yeah, well, and I, I think all of us were, you know, wondering yeah, over I, the holidays, like, as, is this... As our partner walks by in and out <laughs> of the rooms, see me, and he hates when I bring that, that <laughs> L loss yeah. uh, uh, that I bring that up, but, you know, I've been in sales and service for a little over 20 years, um, and... Taking, doing that launch that we did at yeah. the end of last year and just coming into 2018 and producing no results was a very big L for me. Um, and uh, I took it, I took it quite hard uh, because it was one of the first ones, actually was the first ones that we did without uh, uh, the, the, the original team intact. Yeah, I think we were all kind of questioning, you know, can we do this and, and wh- where do we go moving forward? But I think taking that L was actually really good for you because uh, I remember starting 2018 and, and you just kept saying, okay, guys, this is what we're going to do in 2018. We're just going to go back to the basics. And I, you kept saying it again and again. I love that you, uh, that, that you said that. Shout out to uh, uh, one of my first mentors, uh, Paul Polycaro from Polycaro Auto, uh, Automotive Group. But he always used to say to me, when we were in like so-called slumps in, 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 in the car business, just go back to basics. And what does that mean? Like in, in, in whatever you're doing, especially if it's sales, it's the simple stuff, right? It's just making another phone call, like sending yeah. out an email and then following up with a phone call. It's taking one more meeting. It's thinking long term. It's just those extra touches. It's those extra touches. Yeah. Just go back to basics. Um, and that... Um, was nice to see that we all kind of took, you know, took the bull by its horns and, and, and went back to basics. Well, and I think mentally just going back to basics, like it allowed us to kind of reset, yeah. refocus. Yeah. And by doing that, we had a few little wins along the way and I'll call them little wins, but yeah. we just needed some like little wins. Yeah. That's all we needed yeah. to kind of propel us. It's uh, funny because you're taking forward. me like right back to February of this <laughs> yeah. year now. And it, I remember saying, we just need some little W's, yeah. like, like just small little W's and mm-hmm. they'll start to compound as Anthony Robbins and anyone who uh, in our, our viewers here on YouTube can see on our wall, we have, you know, a lot of his books up as well. He always says that you can only build on successes. You cannot build on failures. And so to have those little, little W's uh, along the way, uh, i.e. going like going through that philosophy of going back to basics, we 
did a smaller event. Yeah. We just called our closest clients and we friends. We did resale deals. Like yeah. just yeah. little, like one deal at a time, one day deals, at a time, like right? Like even yeah. lease deals, yeah. just renting people's places out again. And I think because of that, correct me if I'm wrong, but that allowed obviously the team at large, but I think that kind of propelled you, like to gain your confidence back. Yeah. Um, and I think that is sort of, where uh, that spearheaded the, the, the podcast. Yeah, well, not, now you're going into the fun stuff. So uh, <laughs> uh, really, because so March-ish, middle of March is when I started to say, you know what, we need to do something totally different. Uh, something out of the box. And the podcast is, is what spearheaded that confidence. I love that you said that. Um, because I knew it was something a little different. I've always liked to, you know, speak on the phone and so the mic... <laughs> Anyone who knows you well knows that you're attached to that thing. So, yes. Yeah. Um, well, I don't even have a, a laptop anymore, right? And so I... It's that was another all, thing that happened this year. Yeah. I got rid of his laptop. I got so. rid of my laptop about seven months ago. Yeah. It was the best thing I've ever done. It just means I send all the emails for him. Well, so. yourself and Tyler, <laughs> uh, Alla, uh, as well as obviously Shemi. And so we, uh, so sorry, going back to um, the, 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 the podcast and the evolution of it and, and essentially the origin of it was the, the thought of doing something different, reaching more people. And it's so funny, right? Like in March, April, I was like, maybe two people might listen or three people might listen. And so it's so nice to see <laughs> yeah. the, the amount of listeners and viewership we have now. And that's obviously thanks to you guys. So really appreciate the fact that you keep on sharing it. You keep on giving us uh, uh, feedback mm -hmm. uh, and, and all of it, the good, the bad, the ugly. We love it all because it's the only way that we're going to grow. But let's kind of go back throughout the year. And that's that, that, that that's what... The, the, the process was going to be about today's podcast, right? Well, yeah. I mean, I guess we just started with one little mic in a boardroom, and it was just going to be you providing education from a real estate perspective. Yeah. Uh, and that's where we started, and that's really what our first three episodes were. And we were laughing because we're like, no one's going to listen to this. <laughs> and maybe no one did. I'm not sure. But, you know, once you got a little bit more used to to being in front of a mic and, and, and having a camera sometimes filming you. Yeah. Um, then we thought, we need to have guests. Like, who are we going to have as guests on our podcast? Who's going to come to sit with us and do our podcast? Yeah, and and that wasn't even easy to get the first guest. <laughs> yeah. Like, cause no one wanted to do it. No one knew what we were doing. I didn't even know what a podcast was. Well, it's Quite so frankly, funny. So I was just alone. about to say that. You didn't even know what a podcast was. You're like, Jess, what is a podcast? I was like, you know, it's, it's essentially the modern day radio station, right? right? Well, you, you, yeah. And I mean, I guess I, I was like, yeah, I guess I'll check it out. Like, I'll look. You, you, you mentioned some podcasts that you wanted me to start listening to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And uh, I was like, okay, I mean, you seem pretty passionate about it. So, like, I'm, I'm happy to give it a go. But I certainly wasn't, uh, I didn't have a lot of background in it. Well, you were also helping with the editing, which you had no clue what you yeah. were doing. But yet you, hence why we, I, I and Simos and the team call you the crazy <laughs> eight. You just do it. You figure it out. You YouTubed it and said, ah, how do you edit? So shout out to... Mr. Alan Kendall, yes. VP of uh, Dominion Lending, who was our first he, guest. He took the plunge. He took the plunge, so to speak, <laughs> yeah. um, and loved the fact that he just had faith in us and what we were talking about. Yeah. And what, well, uh, sorry, the message that we wanted to 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 get a get across to our listeners. Which at is that really time. providing value and education. Yeah. And at no cost. Yeah. And even further than that, Laura, I think it's important to mention that. This all started with the thought of giving away all the quote unquote off trade, trade secrets, secrets yeah. right? Like not holding anything to our chest anymore, giving it all away. And if the, the listeners and the viewers and all of our REC insiders, family and friends, if they were, you know, receptive to it, that they would come back and use our services. And that's really you guys hear me say it a lot. That's us peeling back the curtains and telling you exactly what our business development that is. That was actually it's, a name of one of the podcasts. That was one of the name of the podcast. Uh, the, that was one with Simeon and us explaining. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was also nice to see, right? Because not a lot of uh, uh, of our insiders and listeners uh, hear a lot from Simeon. And so he joined us for at least four, five, six episodes and yeah. brought in his aggressive uh, teddy bearish uh, style 
style to the episode. Yeah, he's a bit of a paradox in yeah, that yeah. respect. I yeah. love that guy so much. He was so supportive of this and has always been so supportive of it. Yeah. So love him for that. So again, from Alan, then we started to get a little buzz in the office. And that was kind of cool, right? Yeah. Because people saw, like, what are you always walking around with cameras and mics for? <laughs> so then Sam Hewitt, broker manager of Royal LePage Signature, she joined us and spoke about the importance um, of the role. Uh, well, the, the role of a, a I realtor. guess it was more of yeah. the role yeah. of a realtor um, from a buying and selling perspective. And then we just reached out. I love the fact that we took little, little steps. Yeah, and each person, like, I remember, like, the first person was so great. Then it was like, ooh, Sam's going to join us. Ooh, we're going to have a lawyer on our podcast. It was like, awesome with Sam, too. Eh? She came in so organized. Yes. Like, she knew exactly what she wanted to talk about. And it was awesome. Yeah. She was so yeah, yeah, checklisted. Yeah. And love you, Sam. Love you even more because you're a Dallas Cowboy fan. So how about them Cowboys? Um, then, again, started to reach out a little bit more to our circle of influence, so mm -hmm, to speak. Mm -hmm. We had Sean Dandywall, who is uh, one of the uh, lawyers that we work with. We also had Mark Wiseletter, uh, who's a, another lawyer that we work with as well in the city. Yeah, Gary Hurd. Home inspector. Home inspector. Talk about all things about home inspection. Yeah, Jeffrey Lemos. Yeah, that was actually uh, a very interesting uh, podcast because it was right at a time talking mm -hmm. about W's. We were launching a uh, an event at that time with uh, with a uh, an investment opportunity in downtown Toronto, a pre construction investment opportunity, playground condos to be exact. And it was really cool to have him on at the same time because they they really played off of each other, right? The launch as well as that podcast episode. Yeah, talking they went well together because right? people didn't people don't realize, um, you know, that you are paying HST on closing if you're a, an investor, um, but there are ways to get it back. And, and he went through the whole process and what you need to know. And that was very, very uh, important information for people who were purchasing that condo with us that week. And if you don't do it properly, you'll be out of you know, 25, yeah. 26, 30, like there's a lot of the thousands of dollars I'm talking about. And so it was really good that he brought the exact way to do it um, on your own or you could use them as well. So then I think moving from him, we we then had Sean Hildebrand. That yeah. was a big that was a w big, for us. That was we were a, like, ooh. Yeah, because now we got <laughs> Urban Nation, the country's largest um, statistical firm when it comes yeah. to condo developments. We dubbed that episode the human calculator. Yeah, he's and, the uh, the mathematician. And he was awesome. Like, yeah. he gave true facts. It's fun to, it was very fun to sit down with him at his office. So that was interesting, Especially too. Especially given all the buzz that was going on about, oh, there's, you know, the bubbles burst and, and 2019 is going to be a disaster. And he kind of just laid it out, said, this is what the data is telling us. In black and white, In here's the actual white, facts. Yeah. And how to how to actually look at a market and 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 from a condo perspective, uh, I was going to mention that that was interesting too because at that time, so now we're probably in about May June ish mm -hmm. around there. Yep. We were going back and forth doing episodes here as well, like at our office, not in this beautiful studio now, um, in one of in our board boardrooms, rooms, yeah, <laughs> um, as well as going out and seeing people, yeah. So that was nice to say to go down to Urban Nation's office, uh, beautiful office, and Sean was awesome. Then we started to make, the, that was almost at the end of season one. Yeah. And so, we, and we did have, um, before I, I think I know where you're going, with how we ended season one, but we yes. also de then decided let's have some of our actual clients on our podcast. Ah, yes. Remember Paul? He was yeah. so excited to, Paul Bola, to come in. Uh, not as good looking as his beautiful wife, <laughs> Sangeeta Bola, uh, and definitely his better half. Uh, but Paul was awesome. Yeah, we that shared was a some good scotch. One. That was fun. On the episode. Yeah. Um, and we were actually tasting some scotch, and that was uh, that was dubbed Scotch in Real Estate. I think that was that yeah. episode. Yeah. And we spoke about his um, tips just from being an investor from outside the country he never he he, he never uh, lived uh oh, sorry he wasn't born in in, in, in canada, canada yeah. he moved here after he got married and his process what he had to go through um his what he's doing now from build uh, from the perspective of building out his portfolio yeah. right yeah. so that was actually i believe our first real story segment yeah. on the podcast, yeah. uh, which we obviously went into even more in season two. But to cap off season one, it was interesting. That was huge. 
it was actually very big. Yeah. Uh, we had the uh, president and CEO of Royal LePage Canada, Mr. Phil Soper, who uh, invited us to his office, the head office of Royal LePage Canada. I remember how nervous you were. <laughs> yeah, because it was the first big interview, and, and, and I was nervous, uh, and I'm just trying to, like, I'm, it's going back, in it's going back yeah. into my mind now. It was because knowing that he's all... He, he's been interviewed and, and gets interviewed by big media outlets. And not that we're like some huge media outlet. We're just, we're mm. regular people selling, helping people buy, sell, and invest yeah. in real estate. But I really wanted to get uh, uh, his take on the Canadian market at large. But just sitting down with someone that big, uh, yeah, it's definitely nervous. Yeah. I was nervous. And he was great, though. Yes. Like, he, and, and, and you you pulled it together. It's yeah, not yeah, like yeah, you yeah, could yeah, tell. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I'm glad that. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was a great way to, to sort of wrap up season one. And I'm glad we, we decided to go with seasons because in that little hiatus, we were able to kind of think about where we wanted to take season two, what we did well in season one. Um, and that re- is really when we decided, okay, we want more real stories. We want definitely want to to do those segments uh, and we want to continue with interviews and getting and and putting ourselves out there who can we contact and then that was kind of when the light went off and says well why are we being so niche with with the podcast people want to hear from entrepreneurs like from you and and your ideas on on building a team um, and that kind of spearheaded us to open up to leaders and entrepreneurs as well as real estate it was the TSN turning point, point so yeah. to speak, to take you, yeah. uh, like you use that word a lot, um, not to steal your, steal your thunder. Yeah. Uh, Thanks. Yeah. It definitely was that. Yeah. Because uh, that's when we opened up our eyes to so many more guests, but I really think it was the TSN turning point because that's my true passion, right? And it's our true passion is speaking with entrepreneurs, going through this entrepreneurial world that we live in, um, it's our day to day, but I love like sitting down with with people in leadership roles because there's so much to learn, yeah. And we do it anyways, and well, and then to learn and then apply to right. to the business, right? right. Like For you, sure. I, how many countless times have you referenced a book or or someone that you've worked for that's mentored you, and you know they used to always say this, and it it really can apply to any industry. Yes. So that. That was great. I think that we did that. And then as we went through uh, is starting season two, uh, we, we we actually shot a lot on on location. Yeah. Uh, season two's premiere was shot uh, uh, downtown at the harbor front with myself, uh, Simeon, and Ju. Yeah. Uh, that was kind of the premiere and the thought process of uh, what we're going to be coming out with for season two. It's weird talking about all this stuff. We're actually at the so, end of it now. Yeah, it so seems so long ago. Yeah, it seems so long ago. Like Brad, was Brad Lamb our, our second? Yeah, so Brad one. Lamb was season two. Yeah, we, we went uh, to his office, we beautiful office. We went to his, office, yeah, yeah, right on King Street, downtown Toronto. Uh, one of uh, Toronto's uh, biggest developers. And now, uh, not only Toronto, he's in Hamilton, in Ottawa, in Calgary. Um, this guy knows his stuff. We called it our most candid interview at that time yeah. because he just really gave the straight goods, like yeah. what he's going through uh, in his business, um, what he sees uh, from a forecast uh, uh, for the real estate market. And so that was really nice to sit down with him. Then we really got out of the real estate uh, uh, yeah, kind of well, realm I think what in we terms learned of from, our discussions. From Brad was uh, that we liked listening to the stories. Like, how do people get to where they are today? How do you become one of the city's biggest developers? And then that kind of allowed us to think, oh, well, we want to hear that story from anybody who's who's yeah. successful at running a business or team. Or- and, and and people who are actually starting out. So we met with uh, Spread Love, my boy Jason Faulkner. We met with your trainer, Jamil. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and- On growing, like, you know, just having an idea and starting to grow a business and them taking the first step. Yeah. Uh, that's almost been a theme throughout their podcast, like taking the plunge and not letting fear hold you back. Um, so that was interesting to learn from those two, for sure. And then right away after that, we go from some from two guys, Jamil and, and, and Jason, who are just starting and in the midst of uh, uh, being in like the real dirt of their business right now, to someone who successfully uh, successfully is probably the biggest brewery in the country. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Cam Heaps from Steam that Whistle. Was, that was exciting. Went to his <laughs> n- their new brewery, yeah. uh, Von Bugle. And that was really good. Like, what yeah. did you like about that episode? 
us up. I mean, other than you got to test the new beer. Uh, yeah, and I really like the new beer. <laughs> yeah. um, and I've always liked Steam Whistle, but I knew the, the Steam Whistle story, and I always thought it was you so fascinating. You studied it or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I, I did it in my uh, during my MBA program. Uh, so I knew the story, and I thought it was just so fascinating. Um, that they decided to take their L. They, right. they they got fired, let go from from working at a brewery, and mm -hmm. they decided to turn that around to and look what they've made out of it. Like I just thought it was such a such a neat story, and he's such a cool guy. So, and then uh, while we were doing all that, um, obviously we were you know still in the business of building people's investment portfolios helping people move into their first home, um, as well as uh, smart size into smaller homes. Uh, on top of that, also helping any of our investors rent out their investment properties. We, you know, now in the mid part of the year, we're probably uh, flirting with the number seventh, eighth, uh, place in the country at right. that time, yeah. and which would have been on on par with what we did last year. Yes, um, and I remember the goal going into 2018 was that if we could just, you know, hold it together and kind of yeah. do the same status quo yeah, for sure. Um, that was that was our goal. So we were we were in and around that range. And then we got the email from Mr. Ryan Serhan's office in New York, uh, star of Bravo's million dollar listing. And we went to New York Yeah, and we thought it was going to be a very easy trip to get there. <laughs> yeah. and we as thought we, we were being so responsible by booking the, the night before so that we wouldn't miss the big interview. This was our big chance, our the, big, the, the big, the big shot. This we was going to be another shot. TSN turning point <laughs> yeah. for us. So that's what we thought. And on the way there, the flights got canceled. Uh, uh, every flight into any one of the three airports in and around New York were no longer taking any, any flights. Yeah. And, and they were like, Oh, well, we'll get you there for tomorrow at 2 PM. Yeah. Which sorry. Which been after. It, which exactly. And so we did a little bit of, uh, Planes, trains, and automobiles. Yes. And so we jumped in a car and took it to uh, to Buffalo. Buffalo. And you lost your phone in Buffalo. Yep. And, but we got <laughs> Just on a bus. Just insult to injury. We got on a bus, uh, took the, you know, the graveyard uh, shift of getting down there. And we got there just about two hours to spare and got the interview done and had an amazing discussion with one of the... Uh, the North America's biggest yeah. real estate yeah. agents. Yeah. And to talk, to speak to him, because a lot of our listeners and viewers are are realtors um, or, or, you know, I, I, as I say, want to be uh, uh, entrepreneurs and salespeople. But to get his thought process on how he has built this machine was really good. And I know you're a fan of his. So yes. You watch a lot of I've, his. Work. I've watched that show since the beginning, so... I was super excited, super thrilled, and, and just taking what we learned from him back to our business here, um, you know, it was very useful information. Just, again, not building on the loss, but him building on um, the wins, like the little successes, yeah. and then never speaking about anything less than that. Like, I thought that was interesting. It's kind of what we were doing in a way, but... It was fitting because he was just coming out with it, uh, his book, like, two weeks before. Right. We back home in Toronto, we're in the process of finishing our right. book, <laughs> yeah. right? Real Estate Intelligence, uh, which is really the, the the guide to anyone in the country who's thinking about buying their first home, selling a home. We actually, there's a section in the book, and this is how much we mean by giving away all the trade secrets, is that there's a section in the book that shows you how to literally sell your own home uh, because we want to be that resource. And if you have questions, then like use us for that as well. Yeah. Um, and so we finished our 2018 edition of Real Estate Intelligence, mm -hmm. uh, which was which took us a while. It, it, yeah. it essentially took us seven, eight months to, yeah, to complete. To, to complete. Well, because we were doing this and yeah. we were selling real estate. So that was kind of, you know, at the end of the day when I had 20 minutes to, to read through um, and make some corrections and whatnot, um, that, that's what we did. Then we got back and uh, we really, really went hardcore into doing some real, more real, more real sto stories. stories. Yeah, we had um, Sue Murphy. But Sue Murphy, who's, uh, uh, that episode was zero to 11 um, properties and Sue uh, is... Just a shark when it comes to taking action and and meeting people, and she really put it out there. Um, you know, somewhere in that episode, I'm not sure if it was in the middle or the end of it. She said, "Look, look, I'm looking for joint venture yeah. partners." Yeah. She's and, trying to get creative, right, yeah. on ways that she can purchase more property. 
and I'm excited to update our listeners and viewers. And I know Sue's happy about this as well. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, Sue closed on one of her first properties with a listener of the podcast who, who heard that episode and said, I want to meet Sue. Right. They met at a coffee shop at a Starbucks for two and a half hours, laid out a plan, looked at properties, and did an actual deal. Isn't that crazy to think that, like, just from the podcast, that that's how that all went down? I so, love it. Like, it's giving me goosebumps yeah, I'm because sure I that never was even always, thought about that. No, that's what I mean. Like, when you ever you think of something like five years out, maybe that would be so great. But yeah. this, was, you know, things started spiraling. Really quickly. Really quickly. Yeah. yeah. And when we're talking only in an eight Nine snowballing, months. I'll say. Snowball. Not spiraling, no, yeah. yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, snowball. We're in Christmas mode. It makes sense. Um, all to happen in the you know in a six month period. I was going to say eight months, but it wasn't even at it was that time. Yeah, it would have been six months. Yeah. Um, adding to the real stories. You know, I, again, the, the one of the biggest reasons we wanted to do more and more real stories is because that's the feedback we were getting from the viewers and the listeners. They're like, hey, we want to hear from more people that are actually buying and selling and investing. What are they going through? And I loved our episode with the three inspiring ladies, Grace, Lisa, and our, Kathy. Our ladies, yeah. Our ladies who... They're um, so fun. They were so much fun. We had some wine. Now, that was actually the first episode in, in this... The, in the studio, in the yeah. Studio. We got, so we got a studio. Yeah, oh, I guess. <laughs> in that time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you can see it behind us. And uh, we brought on Clem who's behind the camera, who's just been an amazing addition to the team. Which essentially meant I didn't have to do the recording anymore. Right. So that's um, a good thing. <laughs> and, and him and, him and uh, Steven, who uh, have done so much collaborations now as they sit together and come up with new creative uh, looks to the video, to the audio, um, and all the little micro content you guys are seeing on yeah. Instagram and Facebook. Um, okay. It's all because of these guys. And so uh, next, starting next year, uh, and I know I'm jumping, but I'm so excited, is you're going to start to see a weekly vlog and actually see in action. Because, you know, while I'm out and about in parties and, and meeting people and friends and family, uh, uh, specifically family, it's like, what do you guys do? Like, don't like real estate agents, don't they just go show homes all day and that's all? Yeah. Well, we do that. But there's a lot more that we're just up to, i.e. the podcast, is that we're going to start showing it. And I'm like showing our weekly, our weekly content so, so, so we can start to get some feedback and you guys can actually get an inside look yeah, of, to, what, to, it what, yeah, to what, what it takes. To what it takes, yeah, really, right? Sure. And hopefully we inspire someone. Well, and that's, that's interesting you brought that up because we also had some other uh, agents on the podcast. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you guys in your conversations, you talked a lot about how they run their businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and so we got that information from them, but now we're also going to be showing people. Yeah, I, I, I think you're referencing uh, the episode with uh, Georgia, uh, Erica, and Jennifer, uh, who are just uh, workhorses in this business. Yeah. And we are so blessed to have them like literally down the hallway from us. Uh, and, and we all kind of have an open door policy where we just share ideas. Shout out to Chris Slightum and Jeff Slightum from Royal LePage Signature. That's the umbrella that we're under here at uh, REC who allow for all this to happen and uh, that leadership comes down from Yeah, and that's so nice because a lot of people might look at it and say, well, you guys are in competition with each other, but that's yeah. not the culture that, that we have here. Yeah, no, for sure. It's, I, it's all about asking each other questions and what worked for you and everyone's very willing to, to sort of give up the, the trade secrets. Well, Georgia, Jennifer, and Erica, uh, specifically on that episode, again, gave away like all the trade secrets. Like this is exactly what we do to sell a home. And so if you have the time and you have uh, uh, like the fortitude to want to do it, here's how you would do it. And they were very open uh, in that sense. And, I, and also we had the guys from around Southern Ontario come and join us yeah. who, with the same mentality, right? So, so, so the other brokers, we sat at, uh, we sat, uh, at a new brewery uh, as well, uh, which is the, the, the six uh, right at the Dundas and Bathurst area here in downtown Toronto. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all sat down. We had myself, Simeon, uh, Justin from London, uh, Mike Kettle from Hamilton, and Joe from Winston. Uh, talk about what's going on in the market and their tips because every one of those guys, including myself, we're investors. We invest ourselves personally. So we've been through a lot and we've seen a lot. 
More importantly, where the, a lot of our data comes from is collectively, we've helped thousands upon thousands, and I'm not exaggerating, thousands upon thousands of people when it comes to investing. Yeah. And to, to bring those tips and, and, and uh, talk about the mistakes people have made, I, I hope that was valuable to the listeners, yeah. right? Well, you know what? Who we can't forget that we had. On, on season two was Jared James. Oh, well, Jared James, top uh, uh, North America coach, business coach, really focuses on real estate but and mortgage uh, and the mortgage business, but very easy uh, to translate that into any sales or business. Uh, he was amazing. Uh, he really, really let it loose. Um, and uh, I was actually excited to hear that it, he mentioned that it was one of the best podcasts that he's yes, ever been on. Yeah. So that was really exciting. Also want to give a shout out to another real story that just came into my head. My boy, I love him, known him for 12, 13 years, Dominic Flagello. Love you, Dom. Yeah, how can uh, you forget him? No, I <laughs> never. never would. <laughs> you can't. Uh, the Italian stallion, Dominic, uh, who spoke about his process from uh, owning, I think he's up to, you know, six, seven, eight doors, and he just laid it all, all on the table where he came from, what his Building his own business as well. uh, That was actually neat. I forgot that. We really spoke about Taurus Multimedia. They're they're a multimedia company, huge multimedia company, and he spoke about the trials that he's been through uh, when it comes to growing a business. Yeah, well, and and investing in real estate as well. And so I thought it was, again, you know, I've used the word a few times, but it was fitting to close off the season with Mr. Phil Soper. Yes, we had him. Well, this time he came to see us. Yes. And I could, you know, it's, it's, uh, the reason I mentioned you being nervous the first time was because now that another four months have gone by since that interview with him originally, uh, you know, just your confidence and and seeing you, how excited you were to have him and, and, and kind of like a do over, so to speak. I love that you said do over and what went into my mind as you started saying that Laura was for a lot of the the listeners at the for the first season and part of the second season start of the second season you might not know but we had the way that we did it so I really want to bring you guys into the behind the scenes of the podcast a little we had things written down on a piece of paper and it was like, these are the questions. I gave you paper today and you're like, what is this? Yeah, yeah the paper you handed me today. Like she handed me, I was like, I'm not used to this these anymore. These are your notes, yeah. But we started like that yeah. and it was very, I guess the right word is structured and, and, and we were making sure that these are some of the questions that we want to follow. Don't forget to touch on this point and yeah. that would lead you into this question. Yeah. Like we used to storyboard it. We yeah. would spend time thinking of all the questions. What does the viewer want to want to listen? But I think in doing that, that kind of allowed you again to gain, you know, gain some confidence in that now you kind of know. You kind of know what, what you need to ask. And we got some great feedback from, from all our listeners on what they liked and what you know, what they wanted to hear. And you kind of just started yeah. applying that and you didn't even need it. And I think like a light bulb went on. And so thanks for that and noticing that. And, and, and I've gotten a lot of that feedback. One light bulb that definitely went off in my head, it must've just been when I was driving home was, you know what? I'm curious in general, like, I'm like Curious George. Like, I want to know how people started their business. I want to know what makes uh, uh, an investor take action. I want to know um, certain tips. And I just reminded myself, I'm going to forget Clem in the room, the cameras, forget the yeah. mic. What would I normally do over a scotch yeah, or vodka? Yeah, and you certainly wouldn't have a piece of paper with questions. I, exactly. <laughs> so. You would just shoot the breeze. Yeah. And, and I'm just now allowing, and we're allowing the viewers and the listeners just to hear it and see it. And so we really hope that that's coming across well. Um, Wanted to give you an update. At the end of 2018, we ranked number three in the country. And so that's for all Royal LePage Canada, our team uh, for uh, deals and transactions done, as well as the way that they track it in Royal LePage Canada is uh, based on gross commissions earned. And we were number three. So, so a, we beat our goal. We beat our goal. We <laughs> yeah. did last year. Uh, actually, I had a lot of people ask me, like, where did you guys finish last year? So we finished 2017 mm-hmm. in number seven. Yeah. In 2018, we finished number three. Yeah. So with all the turmoil that we started the year with, um, starting all a new the losses, podcast, all the hangover. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Also, um, we ended up number three. And so huge thanks to the rest of the team, um, whom you don't 
see and or hear a lot from because they're always out and about with clients on the road. I promise you in 2019, you're going to be hearing and seeing a lot uh, 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 from them, as well as a huge thank you to you for your support. The, the support from a uh, emotional perspective at the start of the year and, and always looking out for us, the amount of emails and calls we get on a daily basis is, is you know, overwhelming of in, new introductions to your friends, your family, um, and people that are looking for this type of service. So thank you. It, it, Definitely. Number one, it couldn't have been done yeah. without, without the them. support. For sure. For sure. <laughs> In fact, now we're so we're we're on hiatus again for a yeah. couple of weeks over the holidays, but we're start we're going to be doing season three because we've gotten such good feedback, and we're actually really excited. We've already recorded. We recorded season three. Uh, it is episode one. Episode one yes. coming out January. Ninth. Ninth. Wednesday, January January 9th. 9th. So for everybody who's listening, our podcast episodes come out every Wednesday. We have 30, I'm proud to say, we have 38 episodes done in this year. That is such a huge accomplishment. Laura, it could not have been done uh, without you. So thank you so much. (laughs) You bet. So much for that. Um, Just for believing in the the vision. Um, And then executing, right? And and to everyone else, Simeon, Clem, Tyler, Alla, Jelaine, Shem, Stephen, you guys uh, just believed in the vision and jumped on. We were able to do 37, 38 episodes yeah. uh, uh, all in an uh, eight-month period. But season three. So season three. Uh, episode Who, one. Yeah. Is... I'll let you talk about it. Ooh, kind of makes sense. Yeah. All the girls go crazy over <laughs> yeah. this guy. So we actually have Scott McGilvery uh, from HGTV. Canada's biggest TV star yeah. by and, far. And let me tell you, he is as handsome in person as you think he, he would be. He has, some, he has nice hair. I'll give it to uh, him. He has nice hair. We, maybe we won't show the video for that one so you yeah. don't have to sit next Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Uh, I'm just amazing. I, uh, Scott and I, we, we, we spoke for over an hour. Um, you'll get bits and pieces from a video perspective. You At any time, you can see the full videos, guys, at uh, uh, on our YouTube page. Just search REC Experience. Uh, you see the social handles behind us. But anywhere on any pad, uh, podcast uh, platform, just search REC Experience. But Scott and I uh, uh, dove right into how he has excelled in, in, in his real estate portfolio, what it took for him to be the TV star that he is and how that all happened, um, as well as we touched on uh, his uh, educational company as well, whom we also had on our podcast, his business yes. partner, Mr. Michael, Michael Saracini, Saracini yes. CEO uh, of Canada's largest investment group. And he dove right into the fact that he had, you know, close to a hundred properties yeah, and what it takes and, to and, do that. And those guys, like they obtain properties quickly and at a young age. And so when you think of, oh, I can't do it. And there's all these roadblocks like that. What they have proven is that, you know, ro- the, it's just obstacles. For sure. It's just obstacles. If things came easy, everyone would do it. For sure. Um, so you just got to keep finding solutions. And and so uh, again guys, we're going to wrap up our year in review. Laura, Wait, thank you. Oh, whoa, whoa, oh whoa, whoa. I apologize. Okay. We we're going to wrap it up with I wanted you to share ah, okay. your your two favorite moments of the year. Number 1 was seeing what you can accomplish uh, when when you just hustle and grind daily. And you're being more pulled towards your passion opposed to pushing towards it, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. It's, it's, I've heard you say that before. Right? Like yeah. it's, I, I'm, I'm astonished by how much we accomplished this year and because we were focused. I think number two is the growth of our team. And I don't mean the sheer numbers of the growth of our team. I mean to see the growth in everyone individually. I start off with my business partner, uh, Simeon, who we both had to take on different roles, but to see um, what we were willing to take on. And so what in terms of uh, uh, him, it was seeing the growth in him from, from, from just, you know, a business mind, right? Uh, to going on to you to see where you had no idea what you, you didn't even know what the podcast was like you mentioned, right? <laughs> yeah. You didn't even know what a podcast was. And then to, to just start trying things. 
Tyler, his relentless uh, uh, pursuit of just uh, trying new things and 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 bringing as much value as he possibly can. And then to our most recent additions, right? Clem, Q, we forgot about Q as yeah. well, um, and and Stephen. They just, you know, they're they're, they're creative minds. Uh, I, I'm just, I can't do all that digital stuff. To, to, so, so to see that all take uh, action was amazing. Like seeing a dream come, come yeah. become a reality. Become a reality. And, and they definitely are the reason exactly. why we can do it. Yeah. I'm going to flip it. Oh, what was your okay. two? What was your two highlights? My two so highlights. Okay, all right. Um, quite frankly, when, when we were... When we got the call from Ryan Serhant's team or the email and then we called them and to say, no, we're coming. Can we come and do it at the office? I, I couldn't even believe it because you had said, I remember when we started doing the podcast, like one day we're going to have Ryan Serhant on. You'll see. You'll see. He said, and I was just like, okay, Jazz, like <laughs> that's so ridiculous. What a, what a thing to say. Well, people just say like, who cares about this little podcast? Like who actually really cares <laughs> yeah. about the podcast? Yeah, right? no, yeah. Nobody cares about the podcast. <laughs> yeah. um, and, uh. And then we got that. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't even believe it. So that was a highlight moment. I was so excited. And I think what I learned from that moment is that, you know, you talk about it all the time. I, I, I sometimes don't always live it. But I think this year I definitely learned that just doing something, just taking one step, see if it works. Don't be scared to try something. If it fails, change it, do something else. Um, but you, you never just by taking that step, you never know where it's going to lead you. You know, uh, not to cut you off, Laura, but Dr. Martin Luther King always said you don't need to see the whole staircase. Just take the first step. Right. And so I love that you made mention yeah. of that. That's one. I'm going to no, put you on the spot. Two. Was that two? Like, so, just, like, so the moment, the Ryan's are in moment, but then overall what I learned, I think about awesome. myself. Really. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, but for season three, we're also now going to be doing some, obviously more discussions and interviews, but we're going to start some new segments. Yeah. So, I yeah, so I, I'm going to let you talk about that because you're structuring it from an episode. So we have the the show where we're sitting down with guests. Yeah. And so that's going to be segmented by episodes. Yeah. And now you're just going to hear a lot more rants and going on. Exactly. And, um, yeah. You know, me just literally, because of the studio, we have four mics. And Clem, Jazz is sure, really liking the mics now. Yeah, so. I love the mics. <laughs> and Clem will, you know, make sure you get uh, our, our viewers to see that to our for our listeners. Um, make sure you take a look at our Instagram page and or Facebooks uh, where you can see this setup for the studio. I'm just going to be grabbing the mic and, and and kind of ranting on some some thoughts that I have. I'll be bringing on a lot of my team members here and there just to talk about what's going on in the business. Quick little two, three, four, five minute segments. They're not going to be part of the episodes. Our episodes are going to run a lot longer and we're going to go to even bigger guests and bring even more yes. value. So please continue to give us your feedback. And please like the podcast, this episode, and more importantly, share it um, and give us feedback, as Laura yeah. mentioned. Well, Jazz, congrats Thank on you. a great year. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy, <laughs> Happy New, New year, year to you guys. Uh, and Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Stay safe. Uh, keep the comments and the feedback coming. We really appreciate it. That was actually Woo! really cool going back. I want like champagne versus yeah. that. <laughs> we should have. Clap. Champagne. That's a wrap. Huh? That's a wrap. That's a wrap. That's a wrap.